certainly the sea level rise is now beginning to accelerate our current sea level rise. I think, for example, we can expect something like uh, 16 inches of sea level rise at Cape Hatteras or near, in that vicinity and 11 inches at, at um, Wilmington. One foot sea level rise could, in theory, produce a 2,000 foot uh, shoreline retreat. As small as these numbers may be, their potential on a, on a lower coastal plain as flat as ours is, is very, very great. We're certain that the sea level is rising. No question about that whatsoever. And we think we know the cause of it, which is the carbon dioxide concentration or, or greenhouse gases. Now it comes down to how fast is the Antarctic ice sheet melting? How fast is Greenland melting? How fast is the ocean warming? All of which will, will raise the sea level. The current approach in North Carolina to stop the erosion of, of our barrier islands is to nourish or re-nourish the beach, pump sand up, sometimes bring it in by truck, sometimes bulldoze it in, but basically pumping it in from the continental shelf. Now the first problem with that is it kills everything on the beach and it kills everything on the continental shelf where they do the dredging. Carolina Beach has had 31 nourishments since the 1955, I think was the first one. 31 nourishments. Uh, how long should we, can we keep doing that? The total of money spent in Carolina Beach is $85 million. Primarily, although sometimes they say it's for other reasons, but primarily the, it, it is to hold the shoreline still so the beachfront property will not be destroyed. Wrightsville Beach has had 26 nourishments. Pea Island has had uh, 16 and, and there are no houses on Peon. It's purely in, in order to save the Highway 12. The most costly beach nourishment, single beach nourishment uh, in North Carolina was one at Rodanthe, or just north of Rodanthe, that cost $20 million for two miles, which disappeared within a few years. And North Topsail has 18 nourishments of various sizes. Topsail now is heavily developed in very serious trouble. The total amount of money spent in North Carolina on beach nourishment is now roughly $855 million. I observed on Bold Bank and many years ago, my, my first hurricane, I could see that the, the road that went directly to the shoreline and, and back into the island were always uh, avenues for overwash to occur. What should have been done was the, uh, the road should have been curved or, um, uh, or you could actually block some of the road, as it's done in New Jersey, block some of the road with sand dunes. I think it's very important to leave maritime forests, not only for natural reasons, for love of nature and so forth, but because forests are, are a really big buffer for wind especially, and to some extent for, for waves as, as well. The seawall approach is, is uh, not a good approach in the sense that it, it, um, it, will, it, it will eventually destroy the beach. If you want the beach, you have to be flexible. You have to recognize that if you don't move, you, nature will eventually take your house. We're still building beautiful bridges to our island to get more people onto the island, which is crazy. And, um, but uh, I think the time has come uh, for us to maybe we can still look at resilience, like raising buildings and so forth. But um, we, uh, it, the time has come to, even in North Carolina, to start looking at the retreat option, moving buildings back or building buildings in such a way that they can easily be moved. A lot of people think that retreat is almost un-American uh, and, and that it's, um, it's like giving up, I, I give up. But it's not a matter of giving up, it's a matter of, of working with nature, recognizing the problem.